hi everybody it's Tuesday evening I'm in Philadelphia PA and I just want to talk a little bit about the jellyfish lamp they are not real and it's actually a square lamp I'm not sure how it's appearing in the video but it's probably the maybe 10 inches in height and I, I'll just tell you about it in the description it's really a fun lamp I really like it to me it's relaxing so today my video is talking about staying back six feet from people and I wanted to show you something about uh, sneezing actually because that's where the problem comes that sneezes can travel like very fast and very far so I went on to this site which I believe is WebMD and it says here that sneezing is an important part of the immune process helping to keep us healthy and sniffle free it protects the body by clearing the nose of bacteria and viruses that's great we can clear our body of bacteria and viruses and we can just give it to someone else because we're clearing it out of us so I've had a little bit of sarcasm today because I'm really laughing a lot about things and I think I'm just trying to relieve anxiety and worry and laughter is always a great way to help you relax so it says when something enters your nose or you encounter a trigger that sets sets off your sneeze center in your brain it the signals are rapidly sent to tightly close your throat eyes and mouth next your chest muscles contract and that um this is really going into a lot of detail but anyway that's when you sneeze now the next one is a description that sneezes are speedy sneezes travel at about 100 miles per hour can you imagine that's faster than most people drive says the author patty wood who wrote success success signals understanding body language she adds that a single sneeze can send 100,000 germs into the air so think about this if you're standing six feet from someone you're not really protected so I mean just stay away from people that are sick and everybody stay home if you're sick and it looks like we're all going to be staying home if you pluck your eyebrows you might sneeze people don't sneeze in their sleep working out might make you sneeze sunshine the sneeziest animal is the iguana iguanas sneeze more often and more productively than any other animal according to woods research sneezing is how they rid their bodies of certain salts that are the normal byproduct of their digestive process didn't know that I watch a few of animal youtubers they camp cannon is one Jacob Fetter he has a lot of reptiles and did not know well, of course not all reptiles are iguanas but that's very interesting so let's go to the CDC because most people are not using hand sanitizer correctly and actually hand washing is better than using hand sanitizer now most of you might know this I am a licensed massage therapist so I'm used to being very sanitary washing my hands a lot I wouldn't like it if a massage therapist only used hand sanitizer and never washed their hands because it's really superficial um, it's not really washing away the germs which is what we want so the CDC actually has another link that you can go to it's called clean hands count and you can click on that okay the CDC recommends washing hands with soap and water whenever possible because hand washing reduces the amount of all types of germs and chemicals on hands but if soap and water are not available using a hand sanitizer with at least 60 percent alcohol can help you avoid getting sick and spreading germs to others the guidance for effective hand washing and use of hand sanitizer in community settings was developed based on data from a number of studies so the CDC which is a government agency did studies on this 
and they're actually recommending to wash your hands with soap and water. They don't say wash your hand with bleach or anything else, just soap and water. And I'm adding to that wash the faucet also because when you originally turned on the sink water, you had to touch the faucet with dirty hands. So if you wash the faucet, you know, as you're washing your hands, then everything is now clean. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers can quickly reduce the number of microbes on hands in some situations, but sanitizers do not eliminate all types of germs. Why? Soap and water are more effective than hand sanitizers at removing certain kinds of germs like cryptosporidium, norovirus, and clostridium difficult difficile, difficile, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. Whatever that one is, that's the first one. I've heard of neuro, norovirus, and I've heard of cryptosporidium. Although alcohol-based hand sanitizers can inactivate many types of microbes very effectively when used correctly, people may not use a large enough volume of the sanitizer or may wipe it off before it has dried. So I'm going to read you exactly how to use hand sanitizer. The amount that you need is based on what the bottle says, but how to do it is based on the CDC. So a lot of people, you just see them, they put a little squirt in their hand and they just rub it around like that's supposed to make you feel better, but that's not the correct way. And as a massage therapist, massaging a lot of people you know, I might do five massages in a day. I don't use hand sanitizer. It's just, you know, I don't, it's to me not sanitary enough. So we do have to wash our hands a lot in that situation. And usually before I massage someone, I ask them to wash their hands or I will usually wash their hands with like a towel and some uh, rubbing alcohol. And I usually wash their feet also because you definitely don't want to be touching hands and feet and then touch the rest of the body. It's just not really sanitary. It says here that hand sanitizers may not be as effective when hands are visibly dirty or greasy. Why? Many studies show that hand sanitizers work well in clinical settings like hospitals where hands come into contact with germs but generally are not heavily soiled or greasy. Some data also show that hand sanitizers may work well against certain types of germs on slightly soiled commu community, I'm sorry, on slightly soiled hands. However, hands may become very greasy or soiled in community settings, such as after people handle food, play sports, work in the garden, or go camping or fishing. When hands are heavily soiled or greasy, hand sanitizers may not work well. Hand washing with soap and water is recommended in such circumstances. And also hand sanitizers might not remove chemicals. Let me click back on that again. Sorry, I, my tablet is very, very sensitive. Okay, so they hand sanitizers may not remove harmful chemicals like pesticides and heavy metals from hands. Okay, so it says if hands have touched harmful chemicals, wash carefully with soap and water or as directed by a poison control center. So if soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Okay. Hand sanitizers with an alcohol concentration between 60 and 95% are more effective at killing germs than those with a lower alcohol concentration or non-alcohol based hand sanitizers. Okay, they may not work equally well for many types of germs and merely reduce the growth of germs rather than kill them outright. The same as washing hands. We're just reducing the number of germs on our hands so our body isn't overwhelmed. So it says, apply the hand sanitizer to the palm of one hand, read the label to learn the correct amount, 
and rub the product all over the surfaces of your hands until your hands are dry. Why? The steps for hand sanitizer use are based on a simplified procedure recommended by the CDC, instructing people to cover all surfaces of both hands with hand sanitizer has been found to provide similar disinfection effectiveness as providing detailed steps for rubbing in hand sanitizer. Okay, so you need to look at the amount and then you need to stand there and rub it all over your hands. That's going to take about 20, probably to 30 seconds. That's a pretty long time. If you just think you're going to put a little bit of hand sanitizer and rub around for like two seconds, you're not really doing a good job. And the best thing is not to touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your nose or your mouth or even your ears for that matter. The last thing on this website says swallowing alcohol-based hand sanitizer can cause alcohol poisoning. And that would be very dangerous because it's not the type of alcohol that you're allowed to consume. Let me just check my other phone here. So I wanted to bring that up because I do see people using the hand sanitizer and it always has irritated me because it's not a substitute for washing your hands. And again, wash the faucet. And one more thing, if you're go going to clean your pet's uh, let's say your pet cage or even the pet bowl where maybe they pooped in the bowl. You want to take that to a separate sink, not the sink where you do your dishes. That's another way that germs can be spread. And a lot of times I take boiling water and I pour it over my sponge to disinfect my sponge once in a while. And let's see what else I do. I just use my sink just for the dishes and I wash my hand either in the bathroom sink. I do have a utility sink downstairs next to my washer and dryer. So standing uh, six feet away, um, and of course we're not going to measure that with two yardsticks, but standing six feet away is kind of silly to me because, this, like I said, the sneeze can spread 100 miles an hour so six feet, that's going to be like less than half a second. I mean, it's just so, it's like instantaneous that your germs are going to spread. So I'll leave all the links for the CDC, the WebMD, and I thank you all for watching. I hope this little talk has helped you to understand that hand washing is always the best, according to the CDC, and I think so too. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there, watch some funny shows, laugh a lot, love a lot. I will see you on the next one.